So good morning, everybody. It's a great pleasure for me to be here today. And I would like to thank the organizers for having invited me to talk about uh, micronutrients and obesity, which is a research thematic I mostly focused on during my PhD studies. And although I'm not currently specifically working on micronutrients and obesity, and that none of the results I will present you today come from the Nestle Research Center, this research area still intrigues me, and I hope I will be able to share my enthusiasm on this, on this subject. So when I say micronutrients, I refer, of course, to vitamins and minerals. And as you know, vitamins and minerals have several specific essential functions in the body. And 20 minutes is too short to go through all, our, all of their function. And what I chose to do today is to give you a quick glimpse of what we know regarding the relationship between micronutrients and obesity, and how micronutrients could potentially be important for energy balance. So nowadays, classical micronutrients deficiency symptoms are much less frequent than they were decades ago, at least in developed countries. And there are several explanations for that, such as the access to a large variety of food, to a lot of individual, and the fortification of food. However, we do not clearly know all the impacts of the different stages that precede the appearance of these classical deficiency symptoms, despite the fact that some of them, such as a decrease in enzyme activities, is probably not without consequences on the metabolism. And if I take the example of energy metabolism and try to think about a consequence of a marginal stage of deficiency, a very obvious one would be the impact it could have on the cellular energy transformation. Indeed, I like to show this quite colorful slide to illustrate that several micronutrients are the main enzyme cofactors in the reaction of energy transformation in the cell, such that uh, um, a deficiency in uh, some micronutrients could potentially impair the process of substrate oxidation and of energy transformation. And experimental manipulation of the diet has been able to show that in animals. For example, upland and baits fed rats um, riboflavin deficient diet and observe a significant de uh, decrease in the mitochondrial oxygen consumption rate, as well as a decrease in the activity of acyl-CoA dehydrogenases, which are enzymes very important for beta oxidation. Similarly, some micronutrients are essential for the synthesis of neurotransmitters involved in the central nervous system control of food intake. Good examples are vitamin C and B6 and their roles in the synthesis of serotonin from tryptophan. So one could think that a deficiency in these micronutrients could potentially impact the synthesis of serotonin and lead to an increase in food intake. So therefore, this quick look into only few of the roles of micronutrients suggests that a marginal deficiency could potentially impact energy balance. Therefore, the next relevant question for us is, are obese individual micronutrient deficient? There is not an easy answer to this question since there is not that much information in the literature. Nevertheless, in the absence of straightforward evidence, is it, it is still possible to find some sort of information that brings us back to some questions that have partly been answered in the literature. I have listed here the main causes of micronutrient deficiencies. And when you look at them, um, it's very easy to associate them to countries where protein or energy uh, deficiencies are quite uh, prevalent, or in countries where uh, there's very little variety in the diet. However, if we look at them from an environmental perspective that is closer to our reality, and we try to relate them to the obesogenic environment in which we live, we could ask ourselves, for instance, is the micronutrients content too low in the diet of obese individuals? As you know, obesity is a consequence of an imbalance between uh, energy intake and energy expenditure, which is often promoted by the too high consumption of energy-dense food. And quite often, energy-dense food is synonymous with nutrient-poor, Data from the NANS3 studies revealed that the percentage of energy from energy-dense food 
was independently and inversely associated with serum concentration of vitamins and carotenoids. Similar data from the USDA showed that rep uh, adults reporting eating fast food were also those who had lower intakes of vitamin A, carotenoid, vitamin C, calcium, and magnesium. And if we switch continent and go to Australia, where the energy-dense nutrient-poor foods are referred to as extra food, we um, realize that um, the Rangan and Hal stud the two studies, showed that although extra food contributed to 36% of total daily energy, 41% of total fat, and 47% of sugar intake, it only contributed to about 21% of micronutrients intake. And similar results were observed in children aged 2 to 18 years old. So these examples suggest that the micronutrient content of energy-dense diet, which is often associated with obesity, might indeed be too low. Another relevant question would be, can repetitive weight loss attempt leave obese individuals with micronutrient deficiencies? Indeed, we must not forget that micronutrients intake are decreased along with energy intake during low-calorie diets. And this is what came out from the few studies that have um, looked for that. Indeed, low energy, low fat diets are quite, are quite often associated with a decrease in micronutrients intake or serum concentration. And apart from low energy diet, other weight loss methods, and most particularly uh, weight loss surgery, can lead to serious uh, micronutrient deficiencies. I will unfortunately not have time to expand more on this topic, but I just want to bring to your attention the update, updates of the best practice in uh, weight loss surgery published in this month's issue of the Obesity Journal. And on their recommendation that pre as well as post-operative uh, deficiencies should be monitored. Indeed, um, micronutrient deficiencies in morbid obese individuals before their surgery is a phenomenon that is becoming more and more recognized. And I have listed here only few of the studies that have evaluated the prevalence of deficiency in their uh, patient before the surgery. And you can see that it, it is not at all uh, negligible. And this area certainly deserves much more investigation. And that brings, us, brings me back to my um, next question, which is do obese individual metabolize and store micronutrients differently? Well, this is a possibility, again, in a morbid obese individual who were shown to metabolize thiamine, uh, vitamin B1, very differently than control participants. They were, in fact, recycling thiamine within the cell to compensate for relatively lower levels of thiamine. In lower-grade obesity, a decrease in bioavailability of vitamin D has been observed following whole-body expo exposure to ultraviolet uh, radiation or following oral supplementation of vitamin D. And the authors attribute that to uh, its deposition in the higher body fat compartments. Similarly, in the CARDIA study, a strong inverse relationship between um, body mass index and serum carotenoids concentration have been observed both cross-sectionally and over a seven-year follow-up period, suggesting that fat-soluble vitamins might indeed be less bioavailable in um, obese due to uh, their storage in uh, the greater fat compartment. And finally, the last question, but not the least, do obese individuals have increased micronutrient needs to, due to their larger body mass? Well, this is a possibility. Few studies have assessed the relationship between uh, micronutrient deficiencies and obesity, and whether it is a cause or a consequence is, is not clear. But for instance, Nashtigal have shown that amongst overweight and obese individuals, Multivitamins, vitamins B6, B12, and chromium intake was associated with less weight gain over an 8 to 12 years period. And compared to non-obese individuals, obese have been shown to have a higher percentage of vitamin C and B2 deficiency and lower serum of vitamins A, C, and E, folic acid, and retinol and alpha tocopherol concentration.